Okay, hi there, guys. Can you hear me okay, Pete? I think I'm coming through, yep. Been a couple of weeks since I did the stream. Let me just type it into chat. Uh, sound okay. Just let me know if you can hear me. Anyone else that's in there, just um, give us a thumbs up. All clear. Sound good. All right, welcome to Trade Setup and live stream. It's the 17th of May. So, um, good weekend. I hope we all had a good weekend. And just took some time away from the screen. It's been a bit of a uh, chop fest lately, really. Um, you know, the, the US market's turning from completely bearish to completely bullish. Um, if you read the news, you would not have a clue what's going on, to be quite honest. They, uh, they like to talk it up a lot, obviously, and they would love to see a carnage. Um, that's what they'd be gearing up for. But the problem is, that I think um, inflation's, I mean, the, to get the carnage they would want, they're talking up inflation. But um, if you go and read the news when they were selling off, that's all they were talking about. And then after Friday night, they had retail sales, which weren't as great as what they said. And we had bond yields going um, down, bonds going up. And you know everything was pointing towards a less fear or less concern about inflation, yet the news would still say, yeah, it's come down because of this, but you know we still got inflation on the cards down the track. So that's what they're gearing up for. But the problem is it's not around at the moment. Um, it's been the same, you know, a very similar story of late. We are, the US is really concerned about inflation um, and what that means to, to bonds, yields, interest rates, all that sort of stuff. And I think if, um, if it starts to really press in, um, then you're going to get some sell-offs in, in the US. But um, we had, uh, what is it, NASDAQ bounce quite hard and they're really reacting to any sort of talk of, or nerves or concern over inflation, you know, it's selling off. They're the ones who got smacked down hard and it was sort of across the board. I think there's a couple of sessions in a row, second session was sort of across the board, but the um, NASDAQ really copped it in tech stocks and then they've turned and bounced back really hard on Friday or the last couple of sessions. So, um yeah, it's kind of buy beware out there at the moment. And it's flying over into our market where uh, we're getting up to the all-time highs and just getting nervous. I mean, we're, we're typically a traditional nervous market anyway, um, lacking you know, opportunities and as such to some point, if you're intraday especially. Um, but we tend to really take our foot off the gas a lot. And we want them to see that, that confirmation yet. The US sort of, you know, the last couple of sessions may be given some confirmation. I, my personal feeling is we're going to go into all time highs. Um, and then I'd be interested to see what happens after that. I'm still looking at gold. We've got a couple of gold positions on um, uh, Perseus and New, uh, Newcrest now, which are both doing okay after gold's popped up. And I think it's tried to flush out some, you know, sellers tried to come in, they got flushed out with a bit of a ramp. And as long as, that inflation talk continues. I don't know why it would turn around tonight um, because I think it's going to take a couple of sessions of bonds rallying, you know, yields coming off because there's no real data coming out anytime soon. This could point to inflation. There's just been enough that's um, is pointing to, you know, we, we haven't got that inflation that people have been fearing and fearing that the Fed's going to, it's going to push the Fed into a corner. They're going to have to react. They're not at the moment. I think real yields are coming down. Um, that inflation talk will just be talk at this stage and the Fed will do what it's going to do, keep supporting markets, keep you know low cost of debt, keep that significant low. They're not taking the foot off the gas anytime soon. They've said that a long time. It's just the market's trying to pressure them into you know, anticipating it and they're getting it wrong at the moment. So I'll just drop that. Anyone that hasn't seen us, I just got sidetracked there. Anyone that hasn't um, joined us before, just... The top left-hand corner, you'll see Twitter. Join us on Twitter. Top right, you can join us on Facebook. Um, but the main thing, if you can subscribe to us on uh, YouTube channels, then in the bottom right-hand corner, is it at Trade Setup Capital AU. And then, um, yeah, just uh, anything you, you see that you like, give us a like. Um, if you like the stream, leave us a thumbs up. It'd be much appreciated. I'll get rid of that, and we'll just get into some action at the moment. So you see we are into um, Newcrest with this little break. Uh, if you didn't this little sort of we call it an ict so if um uh if people don't know an ict is like a bit of a run up pull back and then you've got this lower high coming to play and then when that fails the lower high fails and you pop up off a high low that's an inside continuation so inside continuation of this pullback and this leg up okay so that to me is a very strong good strong um signal 
is you know it's bouncing off the MAs as well. It's pressuring up. So it's backed off from the highs today, but um, that's just your usual flushing. Um, you get your instos, algos in the market are just flushing people in and out, but generally they'll be picking a direction. And I feel that it's up at the moment. So I like Newcrest. Um, we've got Perseus as well. Perseus is not looking too great a couple of days ago, but it's bounced back the last couple of sessions. And I think I would expect that's going to hold, you know, hold above 120 now, flush 120, flush this previous low, rejected it, finished back above in the last couple of days, well, today so far, is looking good. So I would expect that to drive up and through 140 um, because I am expecting gold to bounce. So we'll just go over. I'll just have a bit of a, bit of a review of different markets, what we're looking at, levels, things like that. Go look at some of the charts for the enthusiasts out there. Now, does anyone, do people follow the macro view a lot or not? I do. I follow, you know, and, and as you know, if you've been following me for a while, you know that with my, my shares and things that I'm looking at, I do look at news, but I'm not, a, I'm not a pure fundamentalist at all. I'm more of a pure technical analyst and I will look at the overall macro view of the market because generally the ASX is built to go up. You know, as long as there's nothing going to pressure that too much, then... Um, that should just continue. So if you're doing that and you're going off a nice technical view of different stocks and you're getting in at the right time with your high lows, things like that, you're going with the momentum rather than, you know, trying to pick a bottom. Because at this time at the moment, if you're trying to pick bottoms and you've done that in the past and it's worked, there's going to come a time it just won't work. Because if this market starts to roll and you see something stock related, not looking at the macro picture and the overall index and you're just seeing this is another pullback, I'll buy in the support there, I'll put in a bid, and let it get down there and then buy it. It could be, and you load the boat down there because you've seen a whole lot of stocks doing the same thing. It's going to come a time it's just going to go straight through. I'm a firm believer that's not the best way to trade because there's, for me, there's zero confirmation when you are buying. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, I'll just, I'll draw it up. I'll show you, I'll anticipate what I'm talking about here. And that's, you know, it's just not my style for trading. Um, here we go. So when I'm talking about that, say you've got a support zone that you've identified, okay, and the market's the market's been going up, it's going up, and you you like, you know, you're liking this support, whatever reason it might have done something like that, if that makes sense, um, bounced off there, rejected it, and it's coming down again. So what you a lot of people do will just buy when it gets there. They'll put in a resting uh, bid, okay, a resting bid order. Just draw that a bit better. They put in a resting bid order. Okay, at that support zone. Now, yeah, nine times out of 10, you can get away with it. I come from my background, um, comes from technical analysis in um, indices, futures, things like that. And they will flush those levels time and time again because they know that people put in resting ones, stops below, trigger both, ramp it straight back up again. And then people chase their tail on the way back up. And it's what we call trapping traders. Now, um, you can get away with it a lot more in shares because they just built to go up, like I said, where indices and currencies and things will flick around um, wide ranges, narrow ranges, all sorts of stuff. And they're constantly um, searching for liquidity. So it's a different sort of style. So that's why I would never just sit on the bid there, um, put in a resting bid and expect the market to come in, tag me and straight back up from there. And it'd be, you know, be spot on. Yeah, that could happen a lot. But if you've got your stock down there and just go straight through, because um, at this stage, when you're coming in there, there is absolutely zero confirmation that that's going to pull up there. Um, you can't say just because I've drawn a pretty little line there, a colored line, that that is going to, um, the market's going to hold up. Okay, that's your ego. That's yeah, the wrong sort of, I guess, mentality to have. I'm always banging on about these um, high lows. This is what I'm always talking about because that is confirmation the market's going up. If you get a market, you know, comes into a level, bounces, it could come down, it could go up. But as soon as we find that, People buying at a higher high level, you know, you know that this level here is um, confirmed by then, and you're looking to buy. Okay, so for me, that's that's a good way, especially in the markets at the moment. And like Pete said, macro looks a bit dodgy. You, I think you really do need to buy off confirmation that you're buying on the right side of the market. You're not buying into a pullback. You're not trying to anticipate a low because there's going to come a time where you're not going to find the low, or you'll be in it, but it won't be the low. Okay, and the markets will get smashed because there's a lot of shares at the moment that are um, that are are looking toppy. Look, the trend is up, but the trend is well established, and we're up at all time highs. So, which ones are the ones going to get hit first? Probably the ones that have been going straight up for a long time now. 
because if this market starts to roll and the US starts to get, you know, you rather than see a 200 point down day, you see a thousand, that's going to spook investors, that's going to spook the open, and that's going to spook people probably to, to take those gains and lock them in while they've got a chance because anything that's been hit, you know, we've, we've spoken about this before, if something's setting up and it's had a big pullback and then the overall market pulls back, that one could weather the storm a lot more. Okay, a lot easier than something that's just been in one straight uptrend because it's already found a, a big bout of selling. Okay, so you've, you've, I'm mean, talking, say, this is on your weekly, you might have had something like that and it's gone up and then you're having this big pullback. It's down support, it's trying to chop around here. It's doing something like that. So it's already had this big pullback, taken some heat out of the action, and then the overall ASX gets hit. That will stand up a lot better than something that's just been, you know, in one straight uptrend and it's about here. You know, that, has got a lot of juice to squeeze out, whereas this hasn't as much, okay? And it's really, all, everything's about fuel, fuel for a move up or down, okay? So that's what sort of the price section that I'm looking for at the moment. Um, this this kind of price section, not so much into something like this. I think there's better stocks out there. Something that's taken some heat out of the action, something that looks good, it's showing some signs. Um, they could be a while from setting up, but they could be the next ones. If we did get new highs and we keep chipping away, they could be the ones that start to accelerate. All right, so I'm very conscious at the moment of um, what's happening in the markets and where we are, you know, with the, the macro view. Macro view at the moment, we'll just get that up. Like I said, um, I'm on a five minute chart, so don't worry about that. We get to, let's get to an alley. Actually, let's get to it. I want to show you so sort that of daily picture. So the trend up on the S&P is still, the trend is still up, okay? Whether you take it from that low, I mean, if you don't take it from that low, you'd sort of take it from here. It's across these, then it's still got, it could have room to pull back on the S&P. But I think that's more a function of the NASDAQ at the moment because the S&P basically, <laughs> there's five stocks really that can move it. And if you go and look at the NASDAQ, um, we were looking at this, Anyone that's in our forum, this is what we we're just looking at a couple of days ago, just before we had, you know, when we had this green candle, we said, okay, this has done this before. It's had a leg down. And I'm looking for two legs generally. Uh, when things get a bit stretched, you have a bit of a flush. People might buy the dip like they do, get flushed out even more. Whether they, you know, when we talk about stock positions, some people just don't sell. They think, oh, we're in an uptrend and they'll hold on. That's a recipe for disaster down the track because we know that there's going to be a correction sooner or later. If you're buying at an all-time highs and you haven't closed out because you think we're going to keep going higher, nothing keeps going. Um, it's just a fact. We need to wash out some people. So what I'd be looking at with the NASDAQ, it's still holding that trend up. Okay, that's the trend, low, 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 low. Um, we're just bouncing off this low. So if this can hold up here, if we get something that just starts to, you know, tweak its way back up again, then we're going to go into new all-time highs again. That's going to lift the S&P off this low off the support could just drag it up into new all-time highs and the dow the dow's had you know big spike up flush down it broke some support and it's retraced that straight away but it's still it, you know what i'm saying is they've got a bit of room to move on the downside but still hold their uptrend okay so we could still get choppy it's kind of hard to see the dow just go strange new all-time highs again it's gone some sort of from stretch to a bit of a flush and straight back into a stretched market again extended market so I'm expecting more volatility, but I do expect the um, indices, indices to hold their trend up. Now, the XJO, it's kind of this, you know, rising support, but also higher higher highs. And we've just missed making a new all-time high. And that's why I'm sort of feeling that we could just bounce off the MAs. We've done this grindy action many times before. We were grinding and before we had this massive sell-off. Grind, bit of a flush, straight back up, grind, 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 bit of a pullback in here, straight back into new highs. We grinded sideways, a bit of a flush. So we just need a flush and then reset and go. It hasn't broken the trend at all. We're still holding the MAs. The trend is still up. So we could just keep grinding up into new all-time highs. And then, you know, we'll have to see where the US is at. But for now, trends are up. You don't guess a trend. You don't just get out of everything um, because you could have, you know, back here, we were a bit worried that this could be a lower high, 50% retracement of that move. We get it smashed down, go through these lows, if that's what you're thinking about then and you, you're selling into the high again with no confirmation and then you find out where you know a thousand points higher from there so you don't want to you know you don't want to exit the, everything you've got 
with um, just because we're up into the highs, there's no reason why I can't hold this and just keep grinding up for the next year or so because the US is not raising rates, low interest rates. You know, where are you going to put, if you've got low interest rates, again, we've said it before, where are you going to put your funds into um, uh, bond? If bonds have got, you know, next to zero yield, why would you bother in bonds? You know, that's kind of a, a default mechanism for a lot of hedge uh, funds that are buying bonds because they just sort of have to be invested somewhere, but they're trying to get a yield. But when there's next to no yield, um, they're not really going to buy. And they'll just keep buying stocks up um, because you've got sort of this low cost of debt. Is my feeling anyway. But it could be just a big grind. That's what I'm trying to say. But on the flip side, you want to be ready to be defensive if the macro picture changes, which is not at the moment. I mean, the news is saying it's changing, but it's not. It's just um, we're still doing the same old thing that we've done in the past. It's just that ranges might be getting a bit narrower. Um, we're not, we, you know, we're ticking to new all-time highs and coming back, especially in the US. We're not. Um, look at the DAX. The way the DAX has fought back off this spike down, it could be just it could, the DAX could go sideways and still hold the uptrend. You know, I've got a I've got a trend line here if you can see that, which that's broken. But we could have the longer term trend trying to catch up to the the market while it consolidates around those highs, and then we bust into new all time highs. So we're not trying to guess anything at the moment. We're just trying to um, we'll basically trade what we see, which we've you know done more and more in the past. Uh, the that's the this is the FTSE. So that's the daily on the FTSE. You know, we've had the big sell-off. We leg up, pull back, another leg up. You know, yeah, it's extended, but it can continue to be a grindy sort of price action back up again. And we could go back up to these all-time highs, which is, I think it's somewhere up about here. So the FTSE 2 is a while off the all-time highs. They've got a lot of room to move on the upside. Um, maybe they're undervalued, maybe not. I mean, who knows from a uh, stock perspective, but they're, you know, uptrend there. All the markets are uptrend. What's going to change that view? Higher rates, you know, and that's what we're being concerned about at the moment. High rates are not going to happen. We saw that in retail sales. We saw um, jobs numbers, which is a big thing for the Fed, were a lot lower on Friday night, not last Friday, the Friday before. So that was a lot lower than expected. So they're not lifting, and the Fed have said that until we see employment in the US picking up to where it was before, which it's not, uh, we are not going to take our foot off the pedal with um, the bond buying program. So, you know, why why try to guess them? Why try to anticipate when they are? We'll just keep trading what we see. And I think the market's doing that. It just needs to flush more often. So you're going to get these flushes in the markets, um, you know, flush lower, squeeze all the weak hands out, and then we build back up again. So that's my index, you know, to <laughs> sum it up, trade what you see, not what you think. And um, at the moment, they, they are going up. We'll go over to, uh, we'll just have a quick look at gold because, you know, we've got, a bit on gold at the moment. It's going to get to, I would expect to get to that 60 level. We're at 51 at the moment, up eight bucks today. Aussie gold's you know, up 16 bucks, so really doing well. That's what's driving your gold is up today. This is the daily chart. So, you know, we're still contracting. We've got lower highs and we're sort of at that point where if we do hold 16, sorry, 18, 60, 65 thereabouts, we may back off and just squeeze some of this leg up. So we might have a bit of a pullback or we could just consolidate and then lift again and go straight back up again. There's no reason you know, why we can't just keep going up from here. You know, if we break up through these highs, and you can see, I'll just mark them up a bit clearer. These highs just up here at around 1873, I'd say we're going to start to come out of that contraction to the upside and be biased up. Okay, so gold, I'm not sure people talk up in an inflation hedge. I don't get why it is. I mean, Purely because I don't even know why it's inflation hedge. Inflation's going up. The US dollar's going up. You would expect, especially from where we are at the moment. I don't see gold coming up in. I don't see gold rallying when, because it's a currency, you know, the Aussie dollar, if the US dollar rallies, the Aussie goes down. Why would gold go up? You know, it's going to be really, really strongly supported when the US dollar is so low. If it starts to rally, if bonds start to um, drop fall or yields start to go up, pressuring the US dollar. Okay. So, Generally, the, the currency rallies in an inflationary environment, and we're not there yet. The US dollar, you know, eventually it will be, but we're not there yet. So if it, if it is, we start turning into an inflationary environment and, you know, they start to raise rates. I don't see why gold's an inflation hedge. I don't get it. I never have really. I mean, gold bugs can explain it to me. It still doesn't make sense. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm still looking at gold in line with bonds. You know, whether there's limited upside, 
at the moment. I don't know, but I still think there's going to be some, you know, good moves with gold. We just have to see what happens around this zone. It's sort of that 1860 mark. Uh, oil, you know, oil is extended. Copper is extended. We've spoken about these before. Um, that's your daily on oil, but it is, I don't know if that's clear enough. Whoops. That's your, you know, you grind up. It's still in a channel. It's still trending higher oil. And that's quite a good trend. You know, you sort of, you saw this trend getting a bit ahead of itself. We've had a flush lower and we've held an, a level at around 80, you know, 58, 57, 57, maybe 57, 50 held, start to lift, but we're, we're in this channel at the moment and that's not bad because it's kind of a, a nice, even, um, well-defined channel where it could just bounce off the lows, keep trickling up to the highs, but not get out of control. So that's good for oil, I would say. Um, it just want to see what what happens up near these highs at 67 because there's going to be some people that are holding physical gold maybe or trading gold or trading your, your ETFs on gold, uh, sorry, oil, trading oil, your ETFs on oil, which would be getting a bit nervous up towards these highs, especially if they're, you know, they're getting bearish on the overall market because a big sell-off in shares, you see gold get hit. You know, it's just those, those it's a linked market. Now, copper. Um, copper, I'm just watching that because that's extended up. This is the daily chart. And if we get back to, if we can get back to those highs, this is the highest from way back in, was it 2011? You know, we backed off from there. We pushed through those highs. Great. You know, if you're bullish, that's good. But a lot of time we know that there's going to be, you know, there's going to be a lot of liquidity up there. People have been shorting into this for whatever reason, shorting into it. It takes them out. But once it flushes through, it's going to, I would expect, have to do a lot of work to hold this level to continue on up um, or it might just sort of hold a lower high back and fill just to squeeze out some of these buyers because there's a stack of buyers uh, long positions built up into copper and it might just need to squeeze them out before it can get a leg up we are extended momentum starting to roll you know from an extended area extended through a level and generally you know when you get through a level what i'm talking about a lot of the times if it blasts through a level you sort of you can either expect two things it's going to back and fill a bit and then just keep going down and just squeeze out some of those longs because they know that's taken a lot of effort from longs to push it up through that level or it's going to consolidate like it, it could just start to consolidate that level if that's going to consolidate there that's not a bad thing then you would expect as long as it's consolidating above because anyone that's shorting it expecting it to back up back below that level um, is going to get squeezed out so it's going to build up either some, a lot of buyers to get squeezed out um, on the downside or a lot of sellers to get squeezed out on the upside, but it hasn't done that work yet. Uh, where are you? Crypto. Crypto is copping a bit of a beating at the moment. I'll just delete all that. Um, and Bitcoin. So you can see that the, um, <laughs> I like to call them the keyboard warriors are out in force on Twitter saying, oh, we go through this before. We've done this before. So you've done it in an uptrend. That's the problem. That's the difference. You know, you you swung through these, you've, you've held through these pullbacks, these big pullbacks on um, before on Bitcoin and other, other um, cryptos when it's in an uptrend. That's a hell of a lot different to where we are at the moment. Okay, so this could be, if it keeps selling down, you know, like I said before, every market has a limit. There's a saturation point, you might think. Okay, saturation point, I mean, you know, saturation of buyers and no sellers, for example, but if they're not coming in from the sidelines, it's not going higher. It's as simple as that. So anyone that's loaded long and is no longer going up, what are they going to do? Whatever these keyboard warriors say about the beauty of Bitcoin, the beauty of Ethereum and why it should be at 100,000, it doesn't matter. People want to take their profits. It's a psychological game when you get extended. Okay, so, you know, we push through this high and what we've done is held a, a lower high. Okay, the lower highs confirmed with that move, I think through on the weekend and today through this low. Okay, so you can see it quite clearly. If that's your uptrend, that's what you've been watching. That's um, that's broken with this move down. And I was looking at shorting this. We did short it a while ago and got squeezed out when it popped just too early. And I haven't obviously shorted it since, but I would have been nice to short it through. And I was actually looking at this level through here. Uh, now, what's that? That's... 52.70, 52, 52.750, 52, so would have been a nice little short through there and you'd be up quite a bit at the moment. So missed that opportunity, but I still think there could be a bit to come in this, um, in crypto, and sorry, in Bitcoin, because if they're all, you know, if there's no buyers and you're watching this action, why would you buy? You want to see, again, I mean, people do, 
you might want to see something flush down and then you want to see a higher low start to hold. If you can start to hold that, yeah, then we might be having another leg up to back up to these highs. Even if you just get to the highs and retest it and fail, it doesn't matter. You've at least got a long on and um, it's up. It's going to be up ahead and you can just manage your risk as you go. But if we don't see that and we sort of, what I'd hate to see, you know, if you're a buyer, if you're long, is this sharp rally, especially on a daily, a bit of a push up, then it starts to stall because that means a lower high and that could mean a savage sell off. So I'm sort of looking at these two scenarios. You want to see it consolidate a bit around here off some higher lows because then anyone that's sort of selling it, selling it, creeping down, realizes they're running to a wall of buyers, okay? And they have to get squeezed out in the market rallies. But when you get this run straight back up, squeeze straight back up, there's no sellers in the path, but sooner or later, the buyers stop. Sellers start to look at it going, oh, look, if this rolls again, I might as well take my money and run now or take some risk off the table at least. Don't forget they're highly leveraged into um, massive leverage, I think, into Bitcoin um, across the board. And, you know, cryptos in general, big leverage. So there's going to be some leverage positions that will get slammed. You just know it. People do stupid things. It's just, yeah, pretty straightforward. And that's nothing new because we're in a new, uh, crypto is relatively new compared to other markets like stocks and, you know, commodities and things. It's relatively new. People still do the same dumb things and that doesn't change. I don't think that's ever going to change. You know, they get greedy, watch the market go up, leverage to the hilt, get caught by the highs, watch it come down. I mean, I still do it myself. Had a bit of a rotten day on the, on the Hang Seng today. I was just sort of chopping around. And the last one was a short just before I had to close it out to come under here. Of course, that was the one that really dropped. So <laughs> it happens. You know, you've just got to suck it up and move on. So that's your Bitcoin. Ethereum, you know, we've got this big extension up. Take that off. Big extension up. We're finding some heat coming out now, but that's a little bit different story. It's still, you know, that trend up is more contraction, whereas I'm seeing on Bitcoin is more. The trend up is broken, whereas this trend up is not broken on the daily anyway. You just got minor levels on the, you know, maybe we look at the hourly chart. Um, even on the hourly chart, you're struggling. You're sort of seeing this lower high come to play, and that could be simply extension off the high. You take it from the low, and we're sort of about there now. It's just extending on a secondary leg down, turns around and flushes out all these shorts that have been building up. So Ethereum's not looking so bad. I just think that a flow over Bitcoin start to you know, get hit hard is going to be a flow over effect into other cryptos because they're all going to see the same thing. Bitcoin is a leader. People are trying to talk it up. It's not the leader anymore, it's, but it is. You know, people loaded into Bitcoin. Um, Ethereum, there's some people. Uh, Ripple. Ripple to me is, um, yeah, it's not. Look, it's it's a bit of a bit of a mess. We'll see. Just having a look at it now. You know, massive longer term correction. I think we've had a big run up here, big sort of um, corrective phase, lower highs, higher lows. So that's not as bad as the others. It could chop around here while the others, you know, Bitcoin gets hammered. EOS, I don't know if you trade these. EOS not looking so crash hot. The one is Dogecoin, Dogcoin, whatever you want to call it. I call it Dodge Dog. That, to me, you know, uh, we know, we know it's been. It's built on the back of nothing. I don't even know what it does. I don't know much about it. Obviously, I could be missing something. I think the one reason why it's up is Elon Musk. He's, he's obviously got a bit of a... But I wouldn't trust what he says either because they were saying, you know, Tesla, going to use Bitcoin. You can buy it in Bitcoin. Then he comes out. They, they, we know that they've got a big holding of Bitcoin. He comes out and says they're no longer going to accept it and it gets hammered. That's, I think, the reason why it come back down through 50,000. 50, so I don't get it. I don't know. Unless he's trying to buy, I don't know. I don't know either way. Um, you know, it seems like market manipulation to me. What he's saying, and he's doing a similar thing to Dogecoin. So that's only the last so long. You know, I've seen it before. Um, talk it up. It's going to lose the weight that it's had originally. So he might say one day it's going to go up. Oh, with this, that, the other, and it gets smashed because people are sick of it. Um, or it just doesn't run on like everyone thinks. Those buyers get trapped and they get squeezed. So either way, Dogecoin. I just, I think it's based on nothing. It was a joke to start with. Um, I think it's a joke of a coin. Now there's a lot of stuff out there that's absolutely rubbish for cryptos. Um, so if we start seeing Bitcoin come down, it could be carnage in a lot of these um, cryptos in the crypto space. We have to wait and see, because again, it's the leverage. You know, People might find they've got a winning position and they're losing on something else, but they've got a margin calls because everything's not going up like it should, You know, like they were told or led to believe it's going to. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, before I keep ranting, Put in some stocks and we'll get into those. We'll have a bit of a look. Um, I'm just looking at, I'm not really looking at anything at the moment, but um, 
yeah, that's anyone got any questions just about what we've been discussing. Uh, we've gone through the, the bulk of it. I think I'm, I'm what I'm looking at at the moment, I'm not seeing anything seriously you know, that we're going to be seriously concerned about. But um, when you get up to all-time highs, things get stretched. You know you're running out of buys. It's just the beauty, like I said, when the markets are built to go up, especially on indices, it's because, you know, especially in Australia, I'm not sure what the US is like. You know, you've got however many millions, billions of super funds They've got to go into the market because funds have to be invested. They've got a certain mandate, so they just have to put it into the market. So it's got that, um, like crude oil. Crude oil is manipulated because if it doesn't, if it starts to head south, they just cut production. Simple. There's other markets you can't do that with, but crude can. They'll just go, look, we'll constrain, um, we'll constrain production, cut, cut output. You know, demand comes off. We'll make sure that um, supply comes off as well, so they can manipulate that. Indices to me, are, or stocks to me, are sort of the same because you've got to put funds have got to put the money into the market. So it's kind of not manipulation as such, but it's kind of like um, you know, it's got that not hybrid support. Um, what do you call it? It's got support anyway. I forget the word I'm, I'm looking for. If that makes sense. So that's why you know shorts. You got to be careful. Get rid of that and longs uh, have got the upper hand, but not when things roll over. Because the way I like to think of it, there's a um, a rational market, and things are rational like they are now. And then there's an irrational market, and irrational markets usually come on the back of extensions when the market is overcooked. You know, you're not going to get an irrational market generally. Go from a rational market to irrational if it's not stretched, because it's only irrational when people have got a hell of a lot at stake. Okay, like potentially they've got now. People are long, um, you know, especially in the US, we've had all these stimulus checks that have been put into the market because they've got nothing else to do. You're on holidays, basically, away from work. Um, that starts to come off. They have to go back to work. They have to start spending. They may have to take money out of the market, you know, looking at some gains. I don't know how it's all going to work, but, you know, if people are loaded one direction, they start to get irrational things get locked away fairly quickly. And that's where you might look at it and go, oh, the fundamentals look great. Why is it getting smashed? It's just the way it is. Um, all right, let's rip into it. LTR. Let me just look at one thing. Probably just a you know, form of, um, what's that doing on the five minute? This is just the hang saying, yeah, of course it's bounced. So. The Hang Seng at the moment is a bit of a choppy mess as well. You don't know what's going to happen. You've got the index looking like it's positive and getting sold off, gapping up and getting sold off, and you're watching other markets that you try to sell into with the actual underlying futures you try to sell into, which look like they're going down and they're not going down. It's just chopping, so it's, it's a real grind at the moment, real struggle street on some of these indices because you, the weight of being stretched and lacking of opportunities potentially to, to keep going up, but it's not a you know hard and fast reason to go down either. So yeah, it's lacking the selling pressure as well. So what do you do? You chop around and algos just drive the market generally is my belief anyway. They chop around, make the obvious trade uh, wrong, put you on the sideline. So it's frustrating. Let's get over to LTR. Remind, so Good volume today, which is one thing, you know, a bit of a, a pop in volume on a rally off a high low. So I don't like, you know, we go over to the weekly. I just want to look at the weekly first. Put this one up. So you've got, I assume, you know, I sort of would say that's a trend Look, that you could put a line under that. I'd sort of say that trend up is broken. Um, that trend up is broken. And we're, you know, when the market's not trending up, you're either going to consolidate sideways, consolidate its highs, highs, sort of range trade, or you're going to back off and contract lower, meaning, you know, get some of these longs. And it just depends is that if that leg up has been quite consistently bought, as in, you know, very, very minor or next to no selling pressure. It's all been sort of one-way street up 
on the rally, everyone's loaded long, hasn't really been forced out. This could be the first time they get forced out. So I'm tending to think when markets get stretched, um, index get, get stretched and it breaks, uh, you could get a bit of a, people fading that strength, you know, maybe shorts coming in, selling it, you know, on a real intraday basis or a couple of days or, or more than likely. And I don't like to say that because people get up in arms about shorters, but they don't, they don't drive the market down. You're kidding yourself that you believe that shorters, the shorters are the reason why a market's going down. It's not. They're like 1% of the, the volume. It goes down because long positions sell it, close out, simple as that. So that's just me. As a side note, by the way. Um, so you either got you know, some sideways action here, we're on the weekly, and whether it just chops around, it keeps flushing out because there's going to be some people that bought it here or bought it late. If it chops around here, they're thinking it's going to go down, but it's not. You know, they, so they get squeezed out and they have to re-enter, get out, get in, get out. Or you hold a lower high, a key lower high, and you start driving down. But it doesn't look particularly like that at this stage on the weekly because if it was going to go down, I would have expected, you know, the way it's come off here, it's had a, a pop, and it's had a secondary leg down. So that's sort of your two legs down off the highs, okay? And it only just broke on that second leg down. So it could be that it's just going to find a base. Bit of a line to stand around 37, 38, 39, which is these lows here, or potentially we've got a bit lower to go, but either way, it's kind of around that zone. Potentially, I'm not saying it is because it still hasn't broken a lower high. So it's to me, it's range bound in a way. We're just at the top end of the range, potentially on the weekly. So it may just mean on the weekly basis, if you're looking at, if you think it's going higher, might have a bit more time to play out, a bit more work to do. If this market is not going to power on, the ASX is not going to power on, we might find that. Sellers, you know, you get a couple of couple of sessions up in the ASX, and then we get a couple of hits. Take a hit, and this doesn't go anywhere. Sooner or later, there's buyers into this stock that might think, "I've had enough. I'm going to I'm going to take some you know risk off the table. I'm going to go back into cash a bit because that's what we're taught to do." So um, that weekly, you know, it's not good. And it's not bad. So if we go to the daily, what's the daily saying? Just make that a bit better. But daily's all and on not as bad as what you'd think. Uh, you've got you know your lows in here. We just spoke about from the weekly. It's sort of flushed these lows. It hasn't flushed that low, flushed that low. But it's come back into a zone where buyers are happy to you know, lift it. You can see by that, you know, that's your two legs we just spoke about. Essentially, your two legs on your weekly chart. Two legs lower into support relatively stretched when it was into support it's lifted so from here i was going to take all that back from here it's a question whether that's a reaction because we haven't confirmed if we break this level yeah i, I would expect it's going to go up because we're coming off a high low i just don't like the way it's charged up had a good pullback and it's all it's back up i don't think there's enough time played out to meaning to to show me that it's going to be a good strong trend up that i can expect to push through to highs i wouldn't be surprised if it jams through here, you know, to tomorrow, the next day, gets the 50, then backs off because it suckers in and traps some longs and turns around, squeezes them back out on the downside. But either way, it's kind of like that trend, is that the trend and we're coming off a higher low or is potentially that the trend low and we still got a lot of work to do? Okay, so for me, it's looking better, but it's just not what I think it. Go away, so now, yeah, I, I don't know, mate. It's kind of like, that's it's all these traditional things selling may go away yeah we could be but the market's up today so you know it's still trending up overall in the index you'd hate to sell away and go away and find out that um you know you're 100 points higher on the index and all your stocks that you sold you come back and they're all up you know that's not what especially at these levels like i know that there's people going to probably chop around that's probably why we've seen that chop too but i don't i don't do that i don't you know i don't think like that trade what I see if it doesn't do anything in May as long as I don't get stopped out I'll hold it as long as I don't think that price action has changed I'll continue to hold um, GMA GMA is not looking too bad just go to the weekly I don't like that rejection of three on the weekly but it's still holding higher levels it's just you know you want it to kick on soon because if it can't it's going to come down. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Um, you know, we've had this sell off in the weekly. 
we got a lower high, we pushed back into the zone, held the zone again later when the market was going up, and then we took took off, you know, took out that lower high. So generally we're we're on a weekly basis, we're holding off the MAs, we're trending up. But it's a very, it's a very rough trend. It's not a convincing trend on the weekly. Go to your daily, you know, that's you know, you buy the break there, then all of a sudden you're up and you come back straight back down in negative territory. You know, you've got these levels through here that held, held retested the let you know you don't know which way it's going push through without a, a setup straight back into that zone so it's kind of a mess for me at the moment this for me uh, Pete, i wouldn't trade this at the moment i want to see and i want to see strength i want to see strength of a trend um by that i mean you know i want to see a good I'm trying to draw it i'll draw it so there's, there's a difference between what we're seeing here so that's your level, okay? We broke it. We even broke up through. If you can see that, that high was a slight flush of the high. This previous high in here, we slightly flushed it there and then backed off, back down to support. So it's not convincing at all. If that was strong, that should have gone through. There should be no questions asked. It should have gone through. Instead, we come all the way back down to the bottom end of that range, that, that minor range, and then the accelerator straight up and through, straight up through without looking back, without setting up. And the first pullback was just, you know, that to me is sort of a rubbish pullback, retested and failed. And we've come all the way back down again. So we come back into this range. Okay, then we've sort of done something similar in a way, flushed it, retest, we've gone up and we've we pulled back too far. So for me, these pullbacks, this and this, are too deep for a market that's bullish. You don't want to see a market, you know, break through resistance and come all the way back. You know, and that's that's sort of you know we're we're retracing sixty percent of that move up. It's got to, for me, it's got to the pullback's got to be shallow. A shallow pullback is a sign of strength, and then you you know I'd potentially be happy to buy there on that break, not buy here on that break because I think that could fail and go bang, you know, fail at these highs. It could fail anywhere. It just it's not a strong, it's not a strong move up. That's not convincing. It's like um. And I think that's a key thing in your trade. And that's probably what's happening a lot lately. You know, you get these breaks, they go on. People buy in the pullbacks and find out the pullback doesn't stop. It just keeps going back. Okay. And yeah, we haven't broken it. We haven't broken down, but we're not breaking up either. This is more of that major sort of sideways action through here since what's that? December, December last year. Okay. So it's not particularly something I want to buy. And you want to see a market that's, um, you know, you've got to move up. And then it's gradually shallow pullback and it's gradually holding higher levels. You know, as we, I can't draw that, but as you go sort of like this, you know, higher levels and we start to accelerate on the upside. Does that make sense? And that's really bad drawing, but you can see what I'm saying. It's starting to curl up, whereas this is not curling up. It's really just ranging in a massive range and chopping around and that's whipping sellers in. So it's whipping buyers in and whipping them back out and so on and so forth. So to me, I don't see that just yet until we, you know, we've got a clear that high at three bucks. God, that's really, if anyone can understand the picture of those chart and those levels, I'm oh, good for you. <laughs> I can't, I can't now, even though I said that. So I hope that makes sense, Pete. Anyway, um, SLK, we'll see how we can get through here. Uh, Joseph, so that's, that's your daily, we're in an uptrend, that's extended. If you go to the weekly, you can see that that uptrend's extended. You've had, basically oops i want to go that far back far forward trend up leg up minor pullback so shallow pullback like we we're just saying strong trend up another good leg up shallow pullback another good leg up so we've had sort of three legs legs up if we go back to the daily i just want to go back to here we'll just measure it out and see what we so if you're buying this i guess what i'm trying to say is if you're buying it off a daily chart, no, it's not going to work, is it? So we're looking sort of that's your leg up before we had this pullback. Okay, so we've sort of done this. Hold shallow pullback. Like I said, that's probably 30% or one third of this leg up. It's pulled back. Great. Good leg up. So if you see that and it starts to lift, that's good. That's what we were just saying before on the, the previous one. So if it starts to lift after one third of it, so that's your first leg up. That's your first pullback. You know, you've got the daily chopping around, but that's you're going off your weekly. That's your first pullback in your weekly. Then you start to lift and you're looking out on your daily now for an entry and you start to buy on the rise. Not, like I said before, buying to support. 
this is what you want to be doing. You want to be buying here, 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 anywhere when it's on the rise, knowing that if you extend that leg up, you can sort of put a rough estimate where you're going to and you can say, well, if we do go there and I buy here, I know what my risk is because I'm buying off that high low. We break the, we box it up. We break the high. I've got my risk below. I know if we do go to that level where I'm projecting to, that's a two to one, three to one, four to one trade. Great. Take it. Okay. And the same sort of thing here. You've had that leg up, pull back on the weekly inside level. That's great. You know, you've got this kind of action off a high low. So you've, I just want to clear that up because that's, that's a really good example there. I'll go to a different color. So you can see one sort of consolidate secondary leg down. So two legs down, up. So at this stage, you don't know whether we're going to go down or up. As soon as we hold this inside level and you start to hold, really that's prime. Buy on that break, risk below, and you can see you're right because bang, two days later, straight up. So that's that was a cracker. And that's buying on the rise where you know where your risk is. So that's the perfect example of what we just said to do before. Not, not you know, buying to support because who's to say that just doesn't get poleaxed all the way down or there's a massive collapse in the US. Um, you're buying into support by putting a resting bid order, what you think is support, and then it just gets hammered. It's proven like you're completely wrong. And you don't know where you're wrong when you're wrong. So if you buy when the market's rising off your MAs and it's lifting, and you've got, okay, we start to lift. This is a shallow pullback, looking good. We extend this leg up to like that, and you've got that extension. So again, you've got the level, you've got your risk, extrapolate that out, even taking it back a peg, you go three to one. Okay, that's worth, definitely worth the risk and try to write it up as much as you can. So great example for me, I'm not liking this. And if you can see what I'm talking about, it's got through those highs. So you got three new highs, but you got push up, good strong leg up through the high convincingly. These three off the higher levels have just gone through the high a bit before we've had a deep pullback and we've retested this low. And then we've gone back up through the high and today we're red. Okay, so I wouldn't be trading that long. And that's that action coupled with the fact that I think this leg up's extended on the weekly, that weekly leg up's extended, we're potentially going back into contraction again, meaning contraction, we're gonna get you know, a big sell off. So on that basis, I wouldn't buy it. If it proves me wrong and we consolidate up here and we get this shallow, you know, essentially a shallow pullback, yeah, you can go long when you start to get the rise again off a higher level, off a higher low. Okay, but for now, I don't know which way it's going. I'd rather stand aside. Um, yeah, I'll get into L O E L T as well. S G R. Yeah, that's a bit like uh, what Pete said, I think, in GMA. Uh, I'm not convinced that's not a really good trend. We're still below the all time highs on that stock. Um, and it's kind of like we had that gap up, green day, bang, three reds after that, back down to towards that high low. So it's, you know, it's not convincing. You'd rather see, if you can see, that in reverse, where the market starts to really ramp up and the pullbacks are shallow and the extensions are harder, okay? And you're just anticipating that, that next buy off a high or low, you're gonna get the same sort of extension through the highs convincingly before you get a pullback, okay? So that puts you in the green pretty much straight away and you can manage your risk quite easily. But when you've got this kind of trend, that's, you know, this is your high, you go back to here, pullback, push through the high, rejected it, not a good sign, off a higher level, rejected it again, high, low here, okay? We've got through that high again, as soon as we got through on this day, we rejected it two days later. Not strong at all for me. I'm not a big fan of that buy section, and I would probably look for something better. Um, based, I know you trade intraday, but so I'm just talking about it based on your, uh, based on dailies and weeklies, you know, your longer term moves. Intraday, let's just go back to the 30. Intraday, yeah, you're just, you're just buying off the MAs, but, you know, we are getting extended. Look at that. 30 minute extended lack of volume. Uh, momentum's not so, in such a bad position, but it's just extended. Last time we we're extended, we we're at a higher level. We're towards 415. We're kind of extended below 415 at the moment. Not looking too crash hot on the 30 either. All right, uh, volume, I want volume, don't I? Yeah. Uh, e and N. Yeah, uh, fair enough, Joe. I wouldn't be looking at 
intraday that's not yeah like you said there's not enough volatility in there not enough movement um this is looking better and the reason i say that is because if you if you can see it it's quite clear you're looking at the bigger moves no, that's not right get rid of that it's not what i want discard where am i here i've closed it down sorry i'm just getting up my drawing tool <laughs> yeah. Try that again. Okay. That's what I'm looking at. Leg up quite clearly. Pull back. Okay. Pull back fails. Probably 50% of that move up. Then we start getting the base. There's a potential. Okay. We're starting. We've we've gone expansion contraction we're coming out of contraction we don't know if it's sideways we sort of get this pop up here and that's probably the first level i'll be looking at that's your first pullback okay high low then this high low buying on the rise you got to just really see you know you're buying that rise there you potentially a couple of days later buy through that high risk is below and you're just running managing risk risk potentially risk potential risk bit of a sell-off so what we've had and i would i would have probably moved it up to here considering the fact that this is your leg up contraction that's your secondary leg up and it's probably got a bit extended by the time we got up to here uh, now we're going back into contraction again so you've got go back to this color we've got pullback lows put in place lower high taking out the low so you've sort of got one two legs down and we're starting to get back on the rise again so potentially we're coming out of that contracted phase and that pullback of this pullback here is what we're looking at this pullback here it's probably 30 percent of that move up you know give or take maybe 45 it's generally a little bit less than what we think what it looks like that pullback there is um potentially you know it's a strong enough pullback so they had a good strong leg up good extension up the pullback's kind of shallow compared to that leg up holding 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 you know especially when you've got this here this flush and then a rally flush through the lows and a rally that's a good sign that bulls are strong still okay and you just really i'll be looking for an entry now i just don't like these kind of moves i think it's still a bit of a grind up i'd rather see you know something like this bit of a push pull back fill the high low and then buy okay but either way i think that's on the rise more than you know better than the other two at least i think that's a lot more promising um Next one, ELT, is that a stock? ELT, Elementos. All right, we'll do this one. We'll probably finish it there. It's just nearly gone on an hour. Um, that's, yeah, same sort of scenario. You know, you've got it. The trend is up on the daily. We don't need to talk about that too much. The weekly is looking good because it's been, you know, actually, I'll take a step back. That trend up is on the, it's up on the daily. And we've, we're just, as we talked about with the last one, it's a little bit extended, you know, on the, the most recent leg up. And the reason why you say that, you've got momentum rolling over. Last time the momentum was that high, you know, we're up here, we backed off. We just got through those highs. And before we look like we're potentially backing off, um, good volume on that day, which I think is, what day is that? Green day, straight away rejected it. So got through the highs, was pushed through the highs. Um, previous highs here, or change colors because it's not really going to make sense, is it? Took out those highs before we got some sort of failure. Okay, so it looked like potentially, I mean, the MAs, it's just sitting on the MAs. So there's no reason why it can't keep going up. And we might go sideways, consolidate this level, you know, a roughly 1.92, consolidate around there. Momentum backs off, then you sort of do this, we pick up, uh, or we could go as a deeper, a deeper sort of momentum play deeper pullback so that's longer term you take it from there even there you know you probably got a bit of work to do on the downside first before you'd, you'd want to be looking to build a base again you know potentially like this build reset clear level to break it you know to buy into for another leg up so you've got expansion contraction expansion contraction expansion and what you're looking at so once you start to look at that you go how far or how how 
far into that expansionary phase we are. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, what's lining up for it to continue on? There's not too much just yet, so I wouldn't be buying that, but I'd probably be keeping a, a definite eye on it because look at the weekly. If you just take a step back, the weekly looks like it's starting to do some work. Okay, after a long time of doing nothing, years, you know, since 2015, 14, 13 even. So 13, it was sort of hovering around two, below two, below two, and it's been many, many years below that level doing nothing. It's starting to build up good volume on this little rally as well. Um, but like I said, we're failing just through that two level, which is the previous high, roughly 1.9. Just failing. If that was a strong, it shouldn't look back. That should have you know, been an extension, pullback, and that extension should have just gone, especially in a small stock like this. And it could be a function of, um, look at that liquidity too, could be a function of the markets, a tentative up here. In the last you know, couple of days last week, we got sold off and we bounced back. But still, you look at this individually, you know, just from a stock perspective, forgetting about the macros, the way it just sort of got through 1.9 to 2.2 even and rejected off that level, with momentum starting to fade, you know, with a, a bit of a trap, potentially trap some longs through that to the zone and may need to, need to squeeze them out. So we might see a bit of a squeeze. That's what I would be expecting. Um, but if we consolidate around here and everything else backs off, like your momentum backs off, your stochastics back off to that zero line um, and you're going sideways, that's a good sign. It's a strong move. It could be another strong move coming and the next move up could be a lot stronger. Okay, so that's what I'd be looking for. By that, I mean... Um, so this leg up here, that leg up here just starts doing this, you know, maybe a, a few flushes here and there, but we start to get this kind of action and the, the pullbacks get shallower. Okay. And then we get a strong leg up. That's what I would expect. The more we do this around these highs, around that 1.8 to 2 level, sort of that 1.8 to 2 level, um, and you see momentum come back down to the zero line, that could be primed because then you look at it, you go, well, we're not backing off. It's a sign of strength. Momentum's back. If momentum starts to kick up again, that could really power to the upside. Okay. So that's what I'll be viewing anyway. But again, it comes down to what the macro picture is. You know, if we get, we get smashed, the US gets smashed, we get sold off, you get about all what I said. <laughs> I wouldn't expect that to kick on hard because I think people will be too nervous and gun shy when we're in that sort of um, uh, irrational market. All right. I'll probably call it a day there, guys. Any questions um, before I knock it on the head? If not, Thanks for joining me. Uh, remember, if you like what you hear, it'd be great if you could leave us a like on our uh, YouTube channel. I'll just jump in there, give us a tick of approval, even leave a comment. It helps with the algorithms into the um, YouTube. It helps us to get on board, uh, get in front of other people to build the channel. Anyway, that's about it, guys. There's a good chance that um, you're all sick of me. I'll um, I'll jump off now, and we'll we'll see you again next week. Cheers, guys. See ya.